Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about cryptocurrency news. We're going to look at 10 crypto mines as they weigh in on current events. And with that huge 50% crash last week in the cryptocurrency market, I'd like to hear from them. We're going to look at leveraged short squeeze. Is that coming next? And we're going to see Mike Novogratz as he explains why, why, why. So let's get into it. Crypto investing ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. That's what our channel is all about. Can we get 99 likes on this video? Smash the like button down below. It'll help us out a lot. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So, exclusive 10 crypto mines weigh in on post-crash Bitcoin and its future. So, how this article worked out is they just cover different topics and then some of the different people weigh in on each of those topics. I'm going to cover a couple of the highlights, the things I found most interesting. But as I like to do, I'm going to provide you with links in the YouTube description so that if you want to read the rest of this, you most certainly can. So the U.S. government injected USD $1.5 trillion into the system yesterday, and the stock market recovered slightly for half an hour. Uh, wow. Before dunking even lower. Think about that. The market shrugged and the monetary base was inflated significantly, ultimately deleting all dollars everywhere. This will keep happening in larger and larger amounts, he stressed, adding that once people see inflation hitting, then they will stampede towards gold and Bitcoin. They'll look for a safe haven. Bitcoin, But Bitcoin being di digital is easier to own and manage than gold is, so I expect it will eventually win out over gold. He said. And you know, a, a lot of people feel that way. I mean, if you're trying to uh, travel like you're getting on an airplane, it's, it's pretty hard for you to carry a bag full of gold, but carrying a bag full of Bitcoin is really, really easy. It can fit on something that fits on your keychain, literally. So, pretty nice. The fundamental reason for the panic in front of an epidemic comes from the lack of confidence towards economic growth, future prosperity, and losing hope in most governments and distrusting polit polit politicians in power. <laughs> Say that fast 10 times. So, you know, really, a lot of what's happened last week is exactly that. People got fearful because of the coronavirus. They had lost confidence in their governments, and they were taking action not only with cryptocurrency but with the stock market and with every other kind of asset out there and that kind of created a um you know a, a mass of people trying to get cash and i think i had oh i wanted to talk about this chart here and so i had a, a little blow up of this chart and you can see this red line, and this covers from 2012 all the way to today. It covers uh, the last, the most recent eight years of Bitcoin's history. And you can see during that eight years that Bitcoin has held this particular trend line up until last week. And it broke down below that trend line. So the, the bottom line is everybody's been very, very bullish about Bitcoin and its potential future. And a lot of that has been driven because of this particular trend line. And so people are beginning to talk about now that this trend line is broken, what's going to happen next? Are we going to see a significant uh, bear market, a significant drop in the price of Bitcoin over the weeks and months ahead? How far down will it go? And I think that's a really good question, but it's impossible to say at this point. Um, you know, the thing that's really driving all of this is fear. It's not that something changed about Bitcoin. I mean, look at the New York stock market. People are pulling out of all kinds of different companies, whether it's Apple or IBM or, uh, you know, their favorite restaurant. Uh, all of the, the entire stock market as a whole has taken a huge drop. 
And many of those businesses have absolutely nothing to do with the coronavirus. The coronavirus doesn't affect them in a positive or a negative way uh, other than how it affects the entire country and the world as a whole. And so, you know, what we're, what we're really seeing is just mass panic. And unfortunately, I think the media is uh, part of the problem, not part of the solution at this particular time. And while Bitcoin may go to zero, it can never die. So long as there is at least one miner and one wallet somewhere in the world, it can self-heal, self-regenerate, even back to all-time highs. That is an insanely resilient thing, said Jeffrey. And then the next quote, this is in the section about making an investment. There are going to be bounces higher along the way, but don't be tempted to buy the dip until there is visibility on the slowing of the virus, the prospect of recession ahead, and the advent of impactful coordinated fiscal intervention. Wow, is that a mouthful. Um, I think the bottom line is, is just like you would when the market was behaving in a normal fashion, you would be very cautious about when you chose to invest and when you chose to pull out your money. Well, that's even more so when things are as volatile as they are right now because of uh, you know this black swan event that, that is the virus. Risk management is the key to survive this extremely volatile market condition, Zhu said. When the market experiences such large movement, liquidity can be extremely thin and spread can be unusually large, reflecting the balance between supply and demand can tip abruptly, creating substantial impact on prices. When making investments, trading decisions, people should be on high alert and understand that the market condition can change rapidly. Risk management is super important during a thin market. So the market at this exact moment, and we're talking about uh, March 16th, 2020, 6.32 a.m. Central Standard Time, Bitcoin is hovering right around $4,571. You can see that Ethereum is at $104. Litecoin has dropped down to $30. EOS at $1.76. XRP at $0.13, cents, etc. And so as you can see, there is still a sea of red and prices have continued to go down. There's been a few little bumps up, but overall... Uh, things have not been good. Now, do I think it's going to stay that way? Absolutely not. Bitcoin funding rate on BitMEX drops to all-time lows. Is this a setup for a short squeeze? So ultimately what they're talking about here is in the past, crypto markets have ma witnessed massive short squeezes during the run from $4,200 to $14,000 last year. While the majority of markets expected correction around six to eight thousand, the parabolic run caused a massive uptrend, along with short liquidations. And so the the bottom line to this particular article is they're looking at the conditions on Bitmex because of this massive drop, and they're noticing that a lot of people are doing leveraged shorts at this particular time which could be setting things up for a short squeeze. Once it starts going up, once the price starts going up with any kind of velocity, that velocity will get increased as different accounts are squeezed out of their leveraged positions and they're forced to liquidate. And so, um, you know, all of these leveraged positions are extremely risky and oftentimes the people who end up making the most out of them are not the individuals but rather the exchanges um, as Bitcoin has a tendency to move very rapidly. It can move, well, we saw that it lost 50% of its value last week in about, uh, I think it was about a four hour period, somewhere in that ballpark. And so it dropped extremely fast. Well, let's look at what Mike Novogratz, and he explains why Bitcoin crashed and it wasn't institutions. Some people out there have been saying that the reason why Bitcoin dropped so fast were, was institutional money moving out of Bitcoin. But Mike Novogratz is going to address that in this article. This wasn't institutions. 
That was a leveraged washout. Institutions aren't fast enough to sell like that. That was panic selling from people who bought on margin. That's definitely true because a lot of the short squeezed happened during the middle of the night when, when I'm sorry, not a short squeeze, but when the price of Bitcoin tanked last week, um, it was in the middle of the night for the United States. Now, it was daytime uh, in other parts of the world, but... To the best of my knowledge, and I, maybe I'm wrong, the vast majority of institutional money has come out of the United States, to the best of my knowledge. I haven't seen any information that contradicts that. Given that statement, then most of those institutions were not awake, were not involved in the market at the time that it happened. And they not only need, a, it takes them time, they have to get uh, different levels of approval in order to sell off assets. And so they don't move very quickly because they have to get several layers of approval before anything like that gets sold. And then when it does get sold, um, it, 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 was, it was a lengthy turnaround process between the point that the decision was made to sell it and when it actually got sold. And so it's not something that happens in a matter of hours in the middle of the night. It's something that may take hours or days uh, in order for it to get approved. So during standard panics, everything sells off except cash. That's because people want the stuff that lets them buy food and pay rent. Fear equals everything falls except cash. And that's exactly what has been happening over the last week. Everything has been falling except for cash as people are liquidating all kinds of assets in order to gather cash up because they're very concerned about, you know, some sort of uh, apocalyptic issue. Um, now, me personally, I don't think we're going to, I think it's going to be bad. I think we're going to go through a little bit of worse times, but I, I, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world as we know it. I think uh, things will turn around. It'll just take time. It'll be another blip on the radar a decade or two down the road. So um, in the meantime, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Did I, did I not cover anything that you wanted me to go into in more in depth? Or do you disagree with anything that I said? Look, you know things I don't know. I know things you don't know. And when we share what we know, we'll grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you. Please share your disagreements in a polite fashion in the comments down below right here on the YouTube channel. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and hodl. Hold on for dear life. Have a great day.